Getting a customer to purchase from you on Amazon can often feel like a tornado. In this video, I'm gonna walk you through what I'm calling the ICAP Amazon Marketing Funnel, and we're gonna go through and show you the theory. So if I'm a consumer and I go to Amazon and I type in product keyword of some sort, and in this case, I typed in Mega Pint Wine Glass. Now, this is what's called an impression. The impression is, I saw the product. Now, in this particular case, this is my glass right here, this Mega Pint. I have two impressions. I'm seeing the sponsored ad and I'm seeing the organic. So if I click this, that would cost me money. If I click this one, it wouldn't cost me anything. I also have this nice Amazon's Choice badge. Just so you guys can understand this product, this is a new item I launched during the Johnny Depp trial. And it's kind of a fun one here. We, we even threw in a pirate eye patch, which is kind of fun, right? All right, so that's an impression. When I click it, that's the click. And so as we go farther down in this marketing funnel, it's going to be losing some consumers because not everybody who sees the impression will click it. Now, a strong portion of consumers, when they search for something like this, will click on what's ever at the top leading to curiosity clicks, often wasted ad dollars if your item is not relevant enough when they do click it. So once I click it, that's the click. Then the next part of the funnel is to hit add to cart. But what do you notice? I've added it to my cart, but then, oh, I'm just going to abandon now. Oh, I saw something related. I'm going to click on one of these things down here. So I added it to cart, but then I left. Oh, wait, I've got something in my cart later. I'm going to go back and finish the purchase, and that's your purchase. This is what I'm calling ICAP. So if I pull up this uh, tutorial here, this is what I'm calling the ICAP marketing funnel. And, and sometimes people look at this as a tornado because as you're higher in the funnel, it's wider. As the farther down to the bottom you get, the thinner it gets because in theory, you should have a higher proportion of impressions versus clicks, versus add to carts, versus purchases. So I cap. Now, this is a particular concept that I, I've dubbed and I've created here, and I have a, a, a use case for this. So as your conversion rate goes deeper into the I cap funnel, you should spend more on ads if it's going up. And so here's a use case, and I'm gonna show you some additional use cases on, on this video today. If I have a term, Sage Candles for Cleansing House, and this is a particular product that I sold, during week 13, I had a 2.75% impression share. Well, it went up to 7.5% in seven weeks with the efforts that I'm talking about on this video today. So I almost tripled my impression share by using this methodology. My clicks were at 7.5%. They went up to 20%. That means one out of five people who search this term are now clicking on my product. And it was only at 7.5% previously. The add to carts were at 8.9%. They went to 20.7%. Finally purchased from 6.6% to 18%. Now that seems like a, just a lot of jumble of numbers together. But I want to explain the significance of this. Right, So if in a matter of several weeks, we can identify a keyword that's important to my brand or your brand and then make some changes to the listing or spend some more on PPC, and then I can leverage it further and get more of it and increase my sales, that's a marketer's wet dream, right? Like that's just absolutely what we're trying to accomplish. So if your impression number is smaller percentage-wise than your clicks, what that tells you is that the consumer finds your product more relevant than your competitor's product for that same keyword. So if we go and look at um, another keyword here, Johnny Depp merchandise, right? So I'm in sponsored product slot number one because I'm trying to sell that mega pint. As we scroll down, I'm not in the top 20. I'm at right around 2025 20, here for this particular mega pint glass. And so I know that if I could increase the organic rank for this keyword, I'm going to sell some more mega pints, right? All right, so let's go into what I what's called the search query performance report. And this is the reason this methodology is possible. 
Amazon recently uh, released this, and it's in beta, so I'm sure they're going to make some changes. And it's a little annoying because you can't export this report into an Excel file, right? No export button so far. But what's really awesome about this report is that it automatically ranks the products in order of importance. So you can come in and know with certainty that these items that are ranked higher on the left here are going to be more important to your cause. So let's zoom in a little bit because I know it's kind of hard to read. So let's just go through a couple of these examples, right? So Johnny Depp merchandise. So there's 1,500 people that are searching this on a monthly basis as of week 25 right there. And on the, on the right, as we scroll through some of these columns, search funnel impressions. So there are... 209,000 different items that can come up for this. But of those 1,500 search volume, I'm getting 3.88% of the impressions. That's a pretty good number. It could be better, but it's a pretty good number, right? So that means almost 4% of people are seeing my product. Now, as we scroll to the right, though, the number of clicks is at 3.5%. So the consumer is not signaling in this particular case that they find my product more relevant than, say, the rest of the Johnny Depp merchandise. So if I was trying to figure out whether I should spend more time on this particular keyword, you could look at this and make a binary decision. Is the click-through rate higher or lower than the impression rate? And if it's higher on the clicks versus the impression rate, this is a signal that I should spend more time on this product. But if it's lower, that means probably not. You should focus somewhere else. As we go through the ICAP marketing funnel, we can see the add to carts, however, go up to 6.3%. So once they click the page, they're finding something they like, which is fantastic. That means that once I've got them there, my percentage in the ICAP marketing funnel went up, right? So let's pull this back up on screen. So impressions, clicks, add to carts, purchases. And what we normally see is the percentage goes down, farther down in the marketing funnel you get. This is a classic take on the marketing funnel of old where it's a tornado. You got lots of things that are chaotic on the top. You got lots of different impressions. But then as they farther go down in the funnel, it gets smaller and smaller until finally you get that purchase, which is, which is what we're all looking for. So your goal as a marketer is to keep as many in the funnel and keep it thicker and wider um, before they go down and leave, right? You don't want to be like Twister and the cow going out of the marketing funnel uh, as it circles the truck, right? You want it to be specifically getting to the execution and that purchase, right? So ICAP, impressions, clicks, add to cart purchases. So let's see how we do as we go further down. Well, then once we get to the purchases, 10.7%. So this is an interesting case where in, in the ICAP marketing funnel, I have static in terms of the I and the C, the impressions and the clicks, right? So if we were going to draw over this, and I'm pulling up a good old paint here. So if we were going to draw this, right? So like my impressions would be like this, and my clicks would basically be like this. So my marketing funnel is static here. But then what happens, uh, I've got an inverted marketing funnel that my add to carts, right? So I see a gets bigger. And then what happens at the very bottom, it gets even bigger. So my I cap looks like this on this particular keyword. So we know that the problem is right here on click. Well, what's the best way to improve a click through rate? Well, main photo, title, pricing. So we know that once they click though, that the number of people who are purchasing or adding it to its cart went up. So they found what they were looking for. They were interested in what they were looking for once they were there, but they weren't sure as compared to the search result that it was what they were looking for. So if we go back over to the search result, Johnny Depp merchandise, and look at all the different things you can see. There's a bunch of mega pint stuff, right? You got all kinds of weird and interesting things like t-shirts and clothing um, and most of the reviews are pretty poor. So it's interesting that I'm not generating a higher proportion of clicks, right? Because 
you know, generally speaking, everybody knows, anybody who's searching this term has heard about the mega pint joke. So why isn't this item performing better on the click? And that's, that's a question that you would have to figure out. Okay, well, if somebody's looking for Johnny Depp, do they want to see his face? Do they want to see, you know, his mug, right? Or do they just want to make a joke with the tumbler and the merchandise, right? So I think in this particular instance, it's, it's very indicative that they're trying to see Johnny Depp himself, and that's why this isn't performing as well on the click. But there are some things that we could do, right? Like we could rename the product to have Johnny Depp merchandise right on it. Now, we do have uh, the phrase Johnny, and we do have the phrase Depp, and we do have merchandise, but we don't have an exact match on this. So if we were going to try and change uh, our angle or targeting here, what we would do is we would try and get an exact match onto the search query because this is what Amazon is telling us is, ex is really important, right? And you could redo this uh, methodology for all of these keywords in the system, right? You could go one by one to figure out where does my percentage go up, and those are the ones I want to spend more ads on, right? So if we go over to my Age of Sage and I go to the week 13, this is the um, case study that I did. And we look at sage candles for cleansing house, right? So these are the numbers that I shared with you. Um, and I had a 2.75% brand share here. And there's 2,900 people that are searching this term. And then as we scroll to the right, percentage went up to 7.5 on the click, 8.9 on the cart to add, and then, and then purchases 6.6. Uh, .6. And so we knew that this was an opportunity to try and leverage a higher proportion of people in the ICAP funnel. Um, and of course you can't see that. There you go. Now you can see the 6.65 there. So then after seven weeks, we were able to double and triple those numbers because of the focus that we put on it. But let's go back to uh, the Johnny Depp angle. And what you'll notice is back in week 13, Johnny Depp didn't even exist on my stuff because this item that we're talking about today is completely brand new. It's, uh, you know, less than 45, 60 days old or something like that, right? So this, this weekly report changes week to week. And so this behooves you to go in and check it once every month, once every one or two weeks, uh, every other week or every week, because the data changes and you, you can actually measure and see how you're doing with the data or how your marketing funnel is, is, is maneuvering, right? You want your ICAP to get fatter you want it to be fatter at all layers of it, right? So let's put it back on screen here. You want your impressions, clicks, add to carts, and purchases to be fat at every level. But what you're using this report to do is to figure out which portion of the ICAP, impressions, clicks, add to carts, purchases, are you needing to focus on, right? So if you had a big fall off at add to carts, what that means is that once the consumer clicked the product, they didn't want to add it to their cart. They didn't see the urgency to purchase it. They didn't see the need to convert. And what that would mean is that your secondary images would be the problem, right? Or if they go to purchases, but then there's a little bit of buyer's remorse and they don't actually physically purchase it, uh, there could be some other conversion issues you need to focus on. Like what, need, what do you need to do to reassure the consumer that this is the right item for them, that they have found what they are looking for, right? So this is why I really like ICAP because it simplifies this process and you can go onto a listing and say, okay, if I have an add to cart problem, it's absolutely the secondary images I need to focus on, right? If I have an impression problem, it's because I'm not indexing or I'm not spending money on ads, right? So if you don't even have a 1% impression share on a valid keyword, within a reasonable distance of, of search volume, right? Obviously, if it's a 500,000 search volume and you, you've got less than 1%, very different story. But let's say it's a two, three, 4,000 search volume keyword and I can't even get 1% of the impression share. Well, do you even have an exact match of that keyword in your title or do you have it in your bullets? Or hey, do you have it in your brand story or your A plus content, right? These are things that you can leverage to try and increase your indexing, that is show up in the search results for the term, right? So if we scroll down and we just look at all these Pirates of the Caribbean merchandise. So initially when I launched this product, I didn't have the word pirates on the listing. 
and now I sell a pirate eye patch, right? And so one of the things that we need to do is focus probably more on the Pirates of the Caribbean angle, and we don't have the word pirate inside of our A-plus content, which is kind of a miss. So if I was going to look at the brand analytics here and say, hey, I need to focus on this, it's only 670 search volume, but somebody searching this particular term, and if we go on Amazon and type it in, chances are my particular product would perform well. Now, I do have my ad showing up, which is good. But as we scroll down, I'm not organically ranking for this term, despite the fact that it's pretty solid that somebody searching this would probably buy my product, right? So if my impression share is 1.8%, let's see if I'm right, guys. Let's And I haven't looked at this one before, but let's see. If my impression share is 1.8 and my clicks go higher than 1.8, then, then I need to focus on this keyword. 2.48, so, so it goes up. So that's a signal that consumers are more interested in my product than they are others, but it does fall off at 1.47% when we look at the ad to carts uh, and the purchases uh, at a goose egg. Nice, a zero there. So maybe I don't want to focus on this because I'm not getting the purchases after all is said and done. It is only a 900 search volume keyword, 670, excuse me. So you, you have to decide. You have to go through and decide like, okay, does this one make sense for me to focus on? Then we've got things like Johnny Depp Funko Pop. Now, obviously, it's not a Funko Pop, but if we found that people were clicking on my product, and then the ad, and then the uh, clicks were higher than the impression share, so it went down to one percent, that would mean that the consumer would rather buy my tumbler than a Funko Pop. So this is how I looked at, you know, the particular use case I had on. Uh, so if we go back to the Sage uh, Candle. This particular product, which I'm going to show you on screen here in a moment, it's not has nothing to do with candles, right? It was not a candle product, but the consumer was telling us that it was relevant to them. So Sage Candles for Cleansing House, we're going to go and we're going to type that in. Sage Candles for Cleansing House. And when we search that, what do we see? We see a bunch of candles, right? But here's the thing. The consumer was per disproportionately purchasing my product, both organically, uh, like I'm, I'm literally higher rated than the candles, and my product is not a candle. So how could this even happen? Well, never tell the consumer how to use your product. If the consumer says this is a feature, it's a feature. If the consumer says this is a candle, guess what? To them, it's a freaking candle, right? Now... It doesn't light for as long as a candle. It doesn't do some of the things that these candle products do. But here you're seeing that I have three. This is all one product. We have an ad up here. We're getting a sponsored. Um, this is sp sponsored based on star rating, right? So like we're getting a gifted item right here from Amazon with the Amazon's choice. And in addition to that, we have our sponsored product. This is all the same SKU, same ASIN, three times on the search results, which is why I now have one out of five clicks. When somebody searches sage candles for cleansing house, my smudge kit, which is not a candle, is getting one out of five clicks now because of that. I identified this as a trend in the search query performance back in week 13. It's week 25 now. And I said, hey, this is interesting data. I'm almost doubling as I go down in that eye cap, right? So my clicks were almost double my impressions that told me I need to focus more here. So I spent a ton more on ads. I changed the copy on the listing and I, and I tried to get exact matches of the keyword in question in the title and in the bullets and in the A plus content. And what happened was, is my impressions skyrocketed, went from 6% to, you know, I, I forget the exact uh, number here. Let's pull up the numbers again. So it went from 2.75% uh, impressions to 7.5, clicks from 7.8, 7.5 to 20%, right? Like just an amazing jump between these percentages. This is replicatable. This is a scientific method. You can do this yourself. All you have to do is click on the link at the top of the video, which will take you to the search query performance report. You can go in here and test it yourself. You're gonna select your brand. You're gonna select weekly and you're gonna select uh, the current week and you're gonna just mine this thing. You're gonna go down this list and say, hey, I'm gonna zone in on this particular keyword, wine glasses, or I'm gonna zone in on grandma wine glasses, right? 
and and then you're going to go and and look at the percentages and if your percentage of clicks goes higher than your impressions focus on that keyword it is it is a signal it is telling you and these are real numbers this isn't estimated numbers these are amazon releasing this data to you telling you this is important you need to focus here all right so tell me what you thought about the icap marketing funnel um, I think it's really clever. It's easy to remember. You got a monotic device. ICAP, impressions, clicks, add to carts, purchases. If you thought this was cool, please add a comment with ICAP Marketing Amazon Funnel to the comment section. That'll help me rank this video. So anytime somebody searches Marketing Funnel for Amazon, my video will come up. And check out all these other videos on search keywords and SEO and PPC so you can watch these playlists and take it to the next level. We'll see you guys later.